have it, a very very nice 22 degree classic moon halo. It's after midnight now, I'm trying to keep my voice down because I don't want to wake the neighbours. And it's quite cold, you see my breath condensing. It's pretty chilly tonight. But I just went outside around the neighbourhood there with the camera, took a few images with a DSLR for the record. Would have been cool if it actually was somewhere else with nice foreground, but anyway. So it's a full moon tonight. It's actually, it's an apogee moon, so the moon's actually fur, slightly further away from the Earth in its orbit, so it's slightly smaller full moon compared to your perigee moon. Perigee. But that hill is definitely very nice. You can see the, I can see the red on the inside of it. Orange red colour, and then a murky white, and then a then blue on the outside. And I'm measuring it here, 22 degrees on my hand, my hand, you can measure degrees in the sky using your hand. I'm measuring, yeah, just over 20 degrees there with my thumb and finger outstretched arm's length. From my perspective, maybe not yours there, but from mine. It's now midnight and there's a beautiful uh, halo around the moon. We've had several halos in recent weeks, uh, but this one seems to be the best of the year so far. It's your classic 22 degree moon halo. And by 22 degree, I mean it's a 22 degree radius circle, so it's 22 degrees from the moon to the actual halo itself. So it's the actual radius, that's why it's called a 22 degree halo. But of course, naturally, the actual diameter is 44 degrees. But it's very, very big. I'm using my Canon 5D Mark IV here with 15mm super wide angle lens, so this is a huge field of view. I'm shooting video, I've maxed the ISO out, so it's probably a bit noisy, but it's the only way I can get it on live video here. But uh, it's a beautiful halo, you can, with the naked eye you can see the reds on the inside of the ring, and like a milky white around the rest of it with a hint of blue at the edges. Very, very nice halo. Earlier on there was a moon dog as well. And this is forming on a sheet of Cirrostratus cloud now blowing across the country. Uh, the ice crystals on it are causing this phenomena. What happens is the uh, the light from the full moon, uh, and it is full tonight, is getting uh, refracted through ice crystals, almost like a prism effect. It, kinda, it actually is like a prism, and it breaks the it f disperses the light into uh, different colours, and that's why you get this the halo effect. But also the shape of the ice crystals has a role to play in it too to form these halos. It's not just any kind of cloud causes it, you need the right kind of ice crystals and cloud type to get these halos. But anyway, that's your classic 22 degree moon halo. And sometimes these displays can get very complex. If you're very lucky you might see a moon dog here, or another one here. Of course you've heard of sun dogs, but a moon dog is the same thing. It's a parahelic patch either side of the of the moon in the 22 degree angle position. So if I if a moon dog was here, it would be called a 22 degree moon dog, a west moon dog, or an east moon dog. Sometimes you get an enhancement up here above the circle, like a bright line. It's slightly curved at times, it's called an upper tangent arc. And in more rare times, you may see a parhelic circle going right through the moon as a curved milky white line. Those are more rare. On two occasions in my life, I've walked outside, looked up, and I've seen a circumzenithal arc, a lunar circumzenithal arc directly overhead and you actually could see the smile with the colours inside, it was incredible. I've only seen it twice in my life, I never got images of it at the time uh, of stars around, so that was really rare, but you'll not get them tonight because the moon's too high. You need the moon actually low in the sky to get the circumzenithal arc overhead. But anyway, this is what you call atmospheric optical phenomena, the play of uh, water droplets and ice crystals on sunlight and moonlight, which cause these lovely halos and arcs and patches of light, so always worth keeping my eye out for. Uh, there's an old tale in the weather, weather folklore, sometimes if you get uh, a persistent halo like tonight, it can be an indication that uh, rains come on the frontal systems arriving. It's not always the case, but fairly often it is, and the reason for that is some of these frontal systems, particularly occluded fronts and especially warm fronts, have a vast shield of cirrus or cirrostratus cloud hundreds of miles ahead of the rain. 
So when this cloud comes in, you naturally get the halo forming on them. So that's like a visual indicator that there might be rain coming later. And that later could be ours. But anyway, very, very nice tonight. I'll zoom in a bit here. It's not going to make much difference, but it, to show the scale. 